Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bara habita fillah. I thought it would be useful to talk about a very important topic that concerns many of the youth for various reasons. And this topic has to do with the being obedient to the Muslim rulers. And so what is the position of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah? Because the question arose from a particular individual who appears to have been infected by the Aqidah or creed and methodology of the Khawarij and the contemporary Takfiri groups. And so that's why I found it necessary to take some of my time out to talk about some of these important issues and to be as brief as possible as whole books, volumes and volumes and volumes of literature is out there, especially in the Arabic language, which discuss these topics. And Ahlul Sunnah has made sufficient refutation of deviant ideologies, but it's very important for us to at least have an understanding when we have to deal with individuals who concern themselves with these issues. And with that being said, we have to look at the fact that most of these individuals in the English-speaking world, they live in non-Muslim societies as Muslim minorities. But yet they wake up in the morning concerning themselves about distant lands and Muslim leaders who they are far removed from. And what is the hukum and ruling on leader so-and-so? What is the hukum and ruling on uh, king so-and-so? Or prince so-and-so? Or president so-and-so? Are they Muslim? Are they not Muslim? Uh, they're not ruling by Allah's law. All of these things which really have very little to do with their daily practice of how to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that these are major messiah and major issues that should be left to the ulama and it should be sufficient what the ulama have said. But in fact, the people of shubahat are numerous, the people of doubt and deviance are numerous. So there are many people who prey upon the youth such as the groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and we're very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused a lot of their destruction, although we know that they will continue to spread deviance and continue to do suicide attacks and take lives from all of mankind and distort the image of Islam. We know that this is going to be the case. But however, we are thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah, at the hands of their very enemies, and sometimes our very enemies, enemies in Aqidah, enemies in Creed, and enemies in Minhaj, that at their own enemies, they had their blood spilt and were removed from the earth because of the wickedness that they spread. So let's get on to the topic at hand. First, we have to establish what has been established by Allah, first and foremost, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ يَا يَلَذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَعَتِيُوا رَسُولُ وَأُولَى الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا O you who believe. So Allah is addressing the believers. So this is for Ahl Iman. Ya yuladina amanu wa'atiyu Allaha wa'atiyu Rasul. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And what, is Allah, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? As a third uh, entity, if you will, to obey. Wa'ulil emri minkum. And those who are charged in authority over you, meaning your leaders meaning the Muslim leaders. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ And if you disagree over something, 
then return this affair back to Allah and his messenger. If in kuntum tu'minun billahi wal yawmil akhir, if it is that you believe in Allah and the day of judgment, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran about the purpose of creation, why he created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established uh, this in his deen and this important principle in his religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us along with obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, with obedience to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And along with obedience to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded what? That you obey the Muslim leaders. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْتَ نَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ That if you differ over something, if you differ with regards to this issue, then return that affair back to Allah and his Messenger. How do we return our affairs back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died at alayhi salatu wa How do we return this affair to Allah azza wa jal? We return it by going back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about how to understand everything in the religion. And that includes the issue of leadership. That is if you believe in Allah and the day of judgment and that is an address for the believers. Those people who believe in Allah, who believe in the pillars of Iman. Those are two of the uh, important pillars of Iman. The first pillar of Iman is what? Is in tu'mina billahi. Is to believe in Allah. So you return your affairs back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's returning to the Quran. And the Quran orders us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us in the Quran. Ya ladina amanu wa'ati Allah wa'ati Rasul awla al-amri minkum. And the one charge and authority over you. And this is, as the scholars mention, bi ittifaq, in agreement, that this is referring to the Muslim leader. Tayyip. As regards to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in this regard, there is so much evidence from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the importance of being obedient to the Muslim leader. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qal rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asma'u wa a'ti'u وَإِنْ إِسْتَعْمِلْ عَلَيْكُمْ عَبْدٍ حَبَشِي كَأَنْ رَاسُهُ زَبِيبًا The Prophet والسلام, said in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه in this narration, this is in Bukhari He صلى الله عليه وسلم said and he commanded in the imperative form إِسْمَعُوا وَعَطِيعُ He said hear and obey and we know that in the Sharia that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commands with something, that the asl of that command, al-amr yufid al-wujub, that when there's a command in the sharia, that the asl or the origin of that uh, of statement is that it's an obligation, meaning that it's an obligation upon us to practice that, that that is wajib. Okay, that is wajib. If you want to look at the ahkam al khamsa in fiqh, the five... Uh, Categories of rulings in fiqh, wajib, mandub, or mustahab, uh, mubah, uh, makru, wa haram. Haram, we know haram. Haram meaning uh, impermissible. We're not going to get into all the usul of fiqh, what it means, but we'll, we'll briefly be brief. Haram meaning that the one who, uh, uh, who, who does it has incurred a sin, and the one who leaves it has incurred ajr. Meaning if you leave off the haram, you receive reward. Makru, meaning something is disliked, meaning that by doing it uh, or leaving it, uh, by doing it, you have uh, no sin. There's no sin. It's disliked. However, leaving the makru 
you can be rewarded for that because you're leaving maybe something that's doubtful, leaving something that is uh, for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can be rewarded for that. And then the other ahkam, mubah, meaning that there's no reward for doing it, no reward for leaving it. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, mustahab, that uh, there's reward for doing it and uh, no sin for leaving it. And then there is the wajib, which means that it is uh, a sin for leaving it and an obligation to perform it and you will be rewarded by Allah Azza wa Jal. So, in accordance with that, and the command of, Allah, uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu he commanded us to hear and obey. And who did he command us to hear and obey? That even, uh, so hear and obey, even if the one who is ruling over you is an Ethiopian slave and his head is like the uh, like a raisin, like a, a black raisin, or as like a raisin. So here, the Prophet والسلام, used an example to show us that regardless of race, regardless of how you feel, regardless of your whims and your desires, that you wanted a leader like this, and the leader should be like this, and the leader should be like this, that as long as he is Muslim leader, you must hear and obey him. That's the shahid in the, the, the lesson that we want to learn from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Also in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aqal As-sam'i wa ta'ala marriya al-Muslim fi ma uhibba wa kariya ma lam yu'miru ibn ma'asiyatin fi idha umiru ibn ma'asiyatin fala sam'a wa la ta'a fala sam'a wa la ta'a The Prophet Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith in, in Bukhari uh, <coughs> he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said hear and obey again this is the hadith this is the prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa commanded us to do what so we know what the asal is the origin is is that we listen and obey the Muslim leaders he said asam'i wa ta'a hearing and obeying the uh 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 uh, the Muslim leader, okay, al Mari al Muslim, fima uhibba wa kariya, in that which you love and that which you hate. As long as he does not command you to do disobedience to Allah, fi fi the umir bi maasiyatin fala sana wa la taat, and if he commands you to be to do disobedience, there's no hearing and there's no obeying. This is going to be the crux of what we're talking about related to the issue that this individual had brought up. Uh, we're not going to talk about all the issues related to this topic, but we're going to talk about the importance of advising the ru rulers and the importance of understanding the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah or Ma'roof with their uh, advising the rulers and that they are not puppets as the uh, deviant Tekfiri Khawarij uh, 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 assert and lie and slander with and that we have no we don't even give even consideration to their arguments but the problem is is their arguments are widespread uh, unfortunately that their voice is very loud so this is what is makes it a necessity for us to clarify some of those things and, and so I want to mention this before we get into details about this uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Asmi wa ta'a na mariya al-Muslim fi ma uhibu wa kariya ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyatin fi idha umiru bi ma'asiyatin fa la sam'alu wa la ta'a." So if he commands with uh, disobedience, meaning sinfulness, there's no hearing and obeying. Let's just get this right off, so you don't have to listen to the full series of videos to understand. And we're going to bring the dalil in the in the next sittings regard this regarding this topic that. The hearing and obeying is not nafi at ta'a It is not negating obedience to the Muslim ruler in absolute. And what I mean by this, because this is one of the points where we differ with many of the modern day takfiri khawarij uh, 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 sects, is that they say, hey, we, like, we believe in that hadith as well, but the Prophet said, uh, 
That if he commands you with disobedience to Allah, there's no hearing and obeying. So then they take that to mean, they infer from their intellect, they infer from their uh, from their logic and their understanding, which is weak and which is restricted. Instead of referring to the Salaf, instead of referring to the back to the Book of Allah, to the other evidences, or back to the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the other evidences, they refer to their logic and they say, hey, that means we don't have to obey the leader at all. Khas, he's no longer a Muslim. This is the extremeness of the Khawarij and these takfiri groups. However, Ahl Sunnah brings a lot of details and the main point I want to mention is it means that there is no, diso there is no disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 to be obedient to the creation and that disobedience that if a leader commands you, for example, and this is uh, uh, something important too, that if the leader commands you, I don't know anybody who commands you to take interest. There may be interest uh, practice and Reba Banks, as they say, and, uh, and other practices all throughout the Muslim world. However, no one commands you to take Reba. You can avoid it to the best of your ability. You can avoid uh, those practices. No one commands you. There's a difference between having a sin and even allowing a sin to uh, enforcing or saying that this is halal, that's istihlal, and that's a whole nother uh, issue, which uh, is a topic maybe we'll discuss in brief. So the point being here is the difference between Ahlul Sunnah and Ahlul Bid'ah is that Ahlul Bid'ah, they say that it negates the, obedient to the obedience to the rulers, uh, absolutely, and Ahlul Sunnah says la. It means that it's in that command. So, for example, in the situation, the leader orders you to take a riba, for example. They don't say it's halal, but they make you take it. And they say, if you don't, whatever, there's going to be some repercussions. So, and you choose not to be, to take that, that interest, and you disobey the ruler in that. Okay? That will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you didn't obey them in Masya. But that does not give you the right to disobey them in other affairs, in other things. Anything that they command you with that's good, then you must, it's wajib, it's an obligation to obey. So I hope that, that that's clear. And let's move on to other evidences from uh, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Another hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, an Abi Huraira ta, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal, man ata'ni faqad ata'a Allah, wa man asa'ni faqad asa Allah, wa man ata'al amiri faqad ata'ni, wa man asa amiri faqad asa'ni. The Prophet alayhi afdal salatu salam said, uh, and I believe it's a hadith of uh, Sahih Muslim, in Kitab al-Amara, you'll find countless hadith. I counted, I believe, 132 narrations in Sahih Muslim uh, talking about obedience to the leader. And in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, uh, whoever obeys me, then they have obeyed Allah. And whoever disobeys me has disobeyed Allah. Whoever obeys my emir, this means the Muslim leader, uh, then they have obeyed me. And whoever disobeys my emir, you know, my leader, then they have disobeyed me. So, again, all of these ahadith, they illustrate for us very clearly, and there's so many countless ahadith, as we mentioned, uh, that, that uh, refer to the importance of being obedient to the Muslim rulers. And this is a pillar of the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. You'll find it in the books of Aqidah uh, from the past. You'll find it in Kethra. You'll find so many uh, narrations of the Salaf pertinent to this. And we're just going to get into a few as we uh, move along. And another hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, وَأَنَا أَمَرَكُمْ بِخَمْسَ I command you with five. Uh, he said, وَأَنَا أَمَرَكُمْ بِخَمْسَ Allah amarani bihinna, that Allah commanded me with. I'm commanding you with five that Allah commanded me with. So that means this is a command from Allah Azza And the Prophet was commanded to follow this and he's commanding us. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, As-Sa'bi wa ta'a, wa jihad, wa hijra, wa jama'a. Fa innuhu min farik al-jama'a, qeyd al-shibran, faqad khala' ribqat al-islam, min unakihi illa an yiraja'a. This is in Sunnah, this is in Ruahu Tirmidhi, and Imam al-Albani, judged that this is an authentic narration and in this narration the prophet والسلام, said uh, the five things he said hearing and obeying meaning hear and obeying the muslim authority and jihad of course that means jihad uh, legitimate jihad according to the book of allah and the sunnah the message of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam behind the legitimate muslim ruler not uh according to the takfiri creed not according to causing facade and wickedness in the earth. Uh, well, hijra, and hijra meaning to leave, uh, one of the meanings of hijra is to leave the uh, non-Muslim lands to the Muslim lands, or the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah. Also leaving off sinfulness to uh, to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So leaving off sin and leaving off uh, and, and coming to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a type of hijra as well as the ulama mentioned and as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in an authentic hadith. And then he said, well, jama'ah, and then the jama'ah, meaning the the uh, the main body of Muslims. And what you find, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ فَارَكَ الْجَمَعَةِ For verily the one who divides the main body of Muslims, even by hand span, then they have uh, they have removed the shackle, if you will, of Islam from their neck until they return. So some of the scholars even uh, make a judgment that this person has left Islam when you divide the ummah. And others say, no, but this means that they are not following, in, in they, they've committed a major sin because they divided the jama'ah, the main body of Muslims. And this is exactly what you find in these secret societies. Some of them are secret, like a Khwana Muslimin. And some of them uh, just have extreme deviant practices, like uh, Boko Haram, like a Shabab in Somalia, like uh, ISIS, like Al Qaeda. And they cause wickedness and spread evil and fear around the earth to Muslim and non Muslim. Uh, destroying the wealth and property of all of the people. And so what have they done? They've isolated because most of those groups that I mentioned, you will find ample evidence. It's not me just speaking. But if you go to their text, if you see the statements that are widespread, you'll see that they consider themselves the only Muslim. Not just that other Muslims are deviant, but they make takfir of other Muslims. So they have split themselves from the main body of Muslims. And then ruled upon other Muslims that they're not they're not even believers and that their blood is lawful even that's another stage of sinfulness that they went to so they made takfir they broke up the jama'ah and then they spread spread the blood and destroy the property of other believers so this is why their wickedness is well known and why they are to be fought and why the Prophet said al khawarij kilab al nar that the Khawarij, this group of, of uh, that rebelled against the Muslim leader and made take fear of the Muslims for their major sins, or, or for sinfulness, for major sins, that they are uh, the dogs of the hellfire. Al Khawarij, Kilab and Nar. And that's what all of these groups they find, they fit under that. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, we're going to end with this last hadith. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I advise you with fearing Allah and hearing and obeying when Abdin Habashi and even if it's an Ethiopian uh, slave so whoever lives after me they will see many differences and in this narration it says that they will see many differences and then the prophet sallallahu gave us a prescription and beware of newly innovated matters for verily it is misguidance 
فَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِسُنَّتِي This is the prescription. Whoever uh, encounters this from amongst you, then it's upon you my sunnah. وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ And the rightly guided khalifat, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنهم مجمعين, عَذُوا عَلَيْهَا بِنَّوَاجِذْ and adhere to it, adhere to this, their sunnah, my sunnah, with your molar teeth, which is in the back of your mouth. That means it's clinging. In order for you to cling to something, if you cling in the front part of your mouth, that's not really clinging to something. You could bite. But when you cling, when you get your molar teeth involved, that means that this is inserted all the way to the back of your mouth, and that requires a severe uh, biting. That means you fully grasp that. And that shows us the importance of clinging to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to deal with these deviant ideologies. And we'll talk about it more in the next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And the next sitting we'll talk about some of the athar, the narrations of the Salaf regarding this important topic before we get into the meat of uh, of some of the discussion. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.